Good morning. I would like to welcome viewers to our time of worship for the parish of Avon Valley on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent, the 26th of March, 2023. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ, and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Gospel lesson from this morning is written in the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the first verse. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad that I was not there, and that you might believe. But let us go to him. Thomas who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. 
Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. Here ends the reading of this morning's Gospel lesson. Two of the most prominent types of story characters in contemporary popular fiction are zombies and vampires. One can glean these fictional representations hint at a social malaise where many people currently feel dead inside, even though they are outwardly alive. They tell of the living dead, a moribund nightmare that haunts our fragmented and alienated dream world. These genres, zombies and vampires, are an inversion of the gospel. Jesus died so that others may have life. In today's fiction, others die so that zombies and vampires can have life. The raising of Lazarus is more than merely a story about the resuscitation of a corpse. Christ's ability to raise the dead was already well known. He had already reversed the death of Jairus' daughter. And here in this story, he does the same for his friend, Lazarus. Lazarus' death forebodes Jesus' own death, and Lazarus' resurrection prefigures Jesus' resurrection. The difference between the two sets of events is that Lazarus will emerge with his grave clothes, signifying that he will need them again whereas Christ will leave his great clothes behind. Jesus' resurrection transcends time and space and prefigures our own bodily resurrections at the last trumpet. The bigger perspective from today's Gospel lesson is to bring into focus what it means to live. 
we can die spiritually as well as physically. A spiritual death, like a bodily death, can seal us off from the living, bound and entombed, repugnant and repulsive to others. Scripture tells us the wages of sin are death. Sin goes deeper than just wrongdoing. Sin is missing the mark as to living life to the full purpose or tell us that God had intended for you. Eternal life is more than life after death. That is a continuation in perpetuity of this transient life. Eternal life is life itself. True life, real life, rooted in the author of life that is no longer challenged by, physically de by physical death and which can be lived out in the present age as well as the age to come. The point is to seize life in the here and now, a real life that, that cannot be destroyed by anything or anyone. What, I, what Christ offers those who believe in him is eternal life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The apostles in the early church found in Christ what everyone seeks. Life itself, full, indestructible life, a divinely inspired life, that has purpose in this world and beyond this world and is pregnant with meaning. We live in an age where many people's sense of purpose is aimless and the ultimate meaning of life has been lost. Christians are to live our lives unafraid, rooted in love and aiming for the good, the beautiful and the true. We are to be an example of that life to others. We are to live eternal lives. Amen. O oh God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And gathering all our prayers together, let us pray as Christ himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Christ, who walks on wounded feet, walk with you on the road. May the Christ, who serves with wounded hands, stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen.